Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Grace to All with Paul Gray. And I'm excited today. I've got my friend Carla Wicks with us. Carla and I uh, both spent, uh, well, I spent a lot of my life in Lawrence, Kansas. Uh, she did too uh, up until a few years ago, and we didn't realize that we knew each other until we got connected on the uh, internet. And so I'm going to tell you about Carla, uh, and then uh, she'll say hello, and, and we'll get into our subject today. Uh, she's been a Christian for over half of her life. She has a passion for God's word, coupled with a, a concentration on prayer, uh, being open and vulnerable with the good and bad experiences of life that has become her life focus. Her biblical education has spanned 46 years, even though she doesn't look like that could be possible, including many correspondence courses, Bible studies, one that she's written and led attending conventions, speaking at retreats and conferences and pastoral Stephen ministry classes. She's devoted herself to uh, expand knowledge and mature in the faith, and she's an advocate for lifelong learning. She's also a veteran of the Air Force. She's a retired dental hygienist and a gold star mother. She's been freelance writing and blogging for several years. Her most recent works include a novel, Summer at Eagle Crest Drive, which I've written and highly recommend. It's really good. And co-authoring The Potluck Club, The Play. Having grown up in Kansas, she moved 23 years ago and now calls Fort Worth, Texas her home. She's married to her husband, Ken, and she's homeschooling her daughter, Nicole, who's a junior in high school. She's a mother of nine and grandmother of 12. And you can reach her at 40 Whispers at gmail.com and we're going to talk about 40 whispers today uh and before we do that welcome carla i'm so glad you're here yeah thank you for having me great to be here great to have you and uh, i feel at home here even though uh, we didn't really know each other when you were here in lawrence uh, we've been friends on facebook for a while and carla's been involved in the pure light walker class and so i've been able to see her uh, every week in that and be involved in a lot of discussions and she's just a delightful lady as, as you're going to see so carla as, as we get started i always like to start out by asking our guest how has your growing understanding of god's unconditional love and grace for all people How's that affected you where the rubber hits the road and your relationships with family, friends, coworkers, all those things? Um, thanks, Paul. Um, yes, God's unconditional love and grace uh, wouldn't be able to get through a day, not a, not a single day without it. Um, for many years of my younger life, um, before I really made a commitment and dedicated my life to be a Christian, um, life had its ups and downs and probably more downs and ups. And I didn't understand, didn't have a inkling because I didn't grow up going to church every day. So I didn't really have a grasp on this unconditional love and grace. But once I did give my heart to the Lord and actually started developing a daily, very daily relationship with him, I began to understand how this love that's a pure kind of love, as well as his grace that is so predominant every day, can't live without it, has just impacted everything I do, everything I do, everybody I see, and everywhere I go. Well, I, I know it has because I, I've seen that in your countenance and in your writing and, and listening to you. Uh, was there any particular event or situation that uh, that triggered uh, your starting to understand grace and unconditional love? Um, well, I would say it probably started with when I gave my heart to the Lord. Um, I had been in the military, as you mentioned, and I had uh, come home because I had gotten out. I had gotten pregnant and decided I, I wanted to have my child outside of the military instead of in. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was, you know, I was a young in 20 something at that point. And I just got this incredible feeling that there was something missing. There was something missing in my life. And of course, a dear aunt of mine, who's like a grandmother, she recognized it right away and said, uh, I think the Lord is wooing you. <laughs> I was like, well, whatever that means. Anyway, um, we went to church and I heard a message and it was just like, 
all I could hear was what was going on in my heart. It wasn't the words that anybody said. It was the feeling that I, this intense feeling I was getting in my heart. And I knew that I had to let the person that actually put my being together be the one to start controlling what I did. And as soon as I surrendered myself to his love for me, that grace fell and it's been an entirely 180. My life has taken a 180 ever since. And, and it's just a passion of mine that I share. Great. Now you actually wrote a course and taught it. And yeah. what was, what was the focus of that? The focus of the was, it was a Bible study, but it was focused on prayer. Uh, the one thing that I found once I surrendered my life to Christ and started living the Christian walk. One of the things that was difficult besides getting in the word every day and trying to read scripture and absorb it was actually having a prayer life where I felt like um, it wasn't just me just praying and babbling off lists of things that I needed and wanted and had to have, but I wanted to have a an interaction like we're talking right now. I talk and you talk and I, I wanted to actually be able to hear God. And I realized people can, and it can come through other people. It can come through scripture, but a lot of times it'll come right to yourself, right to your heart. And I couldn't have done that if it hadn't been for having a strong prayer focus. So I decided I'm going to write this course and try to help other people walk through what I was walking through. And, and it's just been so rewarding. Good. Well, it so sounds like maybe your, your book is kind of a byproduct of the course. Is that right? Yes, it certainly is. Uh, one of the, as a matter of fact, this book happened about um, six years ago. I had a group of eight ladies and I said, I want to start sharing with you just over the next 40 days um, whispers. Uh, that's how I relate to it. When God speaks to me, I call them whispers that I hear in my heart. And then I turns me to the word where I can study what I'm hearing, whether it's a word or a phrase or whatever. And I thought, you know, it'd be interesting to share this with some other ladies. We started doing it over the internet and they fell in love with it. And then I thought, well, you know, I don't think this was just meant for those eight ladies. I think this was meant for anybody. So I put feet to actually putting all of those 40 days into a book. And that's what's um, that's what I have now is the uh, that still small whisper that's coming out. So are those those 40 days are like a, a one day at a time study and you encourage yes. people to do it for 40 days? Yes. Taking it in small chunks. Yes, somebody could probably sit down and read the whole 40-day devotional and prayer guide in, in a couple of hours in a big chunk setting, but the idea is to make it a discipline and actually be something that you go to during your quiet time every day. And if you do it for 40 days, I think everybody will see a transformation in their prayer life and what they're actually hearing from heaven. And you call it whispers. Uh, and in my book, Notes from Papa, I call them notes uh, that yes. I hear him saying. And then I write them down. And like you, I'll, there'll be something that uh, uh, ties in with the scripture that uh, I'll look up and study or uh, will remind me of something I've heard somewhere else or whatever. Uh, it doesn't make a difference what uh, we call them or or what we call uh, God, really, uh, Papa and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Um, the, the important uh, point is that um, that we do set aside that side, that time and, and not only talk to him, <laughs> uh, but listen. And uh, uh, so have you, in your helping uh, other people do that, uh, have you experienced people who had never really heard God's voice before, and I think he's always speaking to everybody, but we're not always aware of it. Have you had people start becoming aware of that and then been able to share that joy with them? Oh, yes, I have. As a matter of fact, uh, it was about a week into the class. I think we were like day seven or eight. And one of the ladies said to me, I heard one. I heard one. <laughs> 
And then when I finally got to start publishing the book, the lady who actually started to work on my cover graphics, she wrote to the publisher and said, I heard one of those whisperings last night. So, so that's my goal is that we're gonna, I want to grow this community of people that can hear these whispers and you know that that's what they're hearing. They're actually not only doing all the talking, that they're quiet for a little bit and they're listening to see what they hear in their heart or hear in their mind. So yeah, it's Good. been really fulfilling. <laughs> Yeah, it is. I heard uh, somebody say one time, long time ago, at a conference or something, uh, saying, "You know, when when you're when you're praying, you're talking to the one person, the one entity, in the entire cosmos who knows everything. So why would you want to do all the talking?" But I can understand that. I I get that point. <laughs> right, right. I do too. Yeah. So you've been active on on the internet on social media uh, for a while, and uh, you've done some ministry there, connected with different people, which is is how uh, how we've met. Uh, it, did that just start gradually? How how were you? How'd that come about in your life? Well, some of these people that I connected with early on were people that I knew through my involvement with doing community theater. And we grew a group there that then I said, well, you know, I could expand this, put it out on, who knows what's gonna happen, put it out on Facebook and just see who responds. And I was very pleased when I saw other acquaintances that knew me and some that didn't know me, but knew somebody else that knew me. And it kind of happened like that, that, that I started getting a following of people that were interested in what, was actually going on and what was actually happening that because they were hearing good things. So I said, great. Well, great community theater. Now that, that wasn't on your resume. Did you do theater oh, yeah. when you were in Lawrence? <laughs> no, I'll tell you what, when I was in a high school at Lawrence high school, um, I was in choir and I was in marching band. Um, the last thing on my mind would have been theater because I had a preconceived notion of the theater kids and they were not the same. I didn't feel like we floated in the same boat. Um, and I had no inkling until, like I said, my daughter that we have now, when she was eight, we tried everything. We tried gymnastics, we tried cheerleading. And finally, when she was eight, she went to a theater class and she said, these are my people. I have found where I'm supposed to be. And I thought, great, because I, <laughs> I don't have any leaning toward this. And I started going with her, taking her. And pretty soon I found myself giving her pointers on like, well, maybe you should stand and do this. And maybe you should. And she said, you know, if you know so much, maybe you should audition. And I thought, well, maybe I will. Maybe they need just a person to cross from corner one to corner three. So I did. I auditioned for Tom Sawyer and the director called me and said, I want to offer you a role. And I said, a role. That sounds like speaking because yes. I said, oh, I just thought maybe you needed like an extra. And he goes, no, I want you to play the school marm. I know in Tom Sawyer, it's a man, but we're going to make it a woman. And from that performance, I was hooked. Really? I loved this. I really? went on and I've done over 17 productions now. But my first foot on the stage, I was 60 years old. And I tell people, never give up. You never know what's around the corner that you might find some new passion that God's going to all of a sudden just blossom. And just the friend base that I have developed, it is, it is. It's just been remarkable, but I never knew. And I think, why didn't I find this a long time ago? So you've done one or two or three shows a year, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we've done several, my daughter and I together. As a matter Have of fact, you? in the beginning, when we started out, Tom Sawyer, Music Man, Secret Garden, Miracle Worker, she was like loving it, you know. And then she said, you know, maybe you should try to do some plays not with me. 
<laughs> she wanted to try to do some by herself. So that's when I decided I'd try my hand at stage managing and working backstage. And so um, I did, I was stage manager for several productions. Uh, some she was in, some she wasn't, but so I like both on stage and off stage. I, I like it both. It uh, That's wonderful. Interesting. Was your high school band director Ed Bartley? Sure was. <laughs> He sometimes watches these interviews. Oh, good. So, well, uh, hi, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I say it feels weird saying that. She's, hi, Mr. Bartley. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it brings back uh, so many good memories from mm -hmm. Lawrence High School and I student taught there. And then uh, all three of our kids were in the band and the choir there. And uh, great, great high school and great programs there. And uh, right. gosh, our our uh one of our well, two of our <laughs> one of our daughters went to uh emporia state and when yeah, i shouldn't say this online but that was years ago i'm sure it's changed but when she got there the uh she didn't want to be she tried out and then she didn't want to be in band or choir because they weren't as good as the lawrence high ones <laughs> of course <laughs> point, we were awesome you remember that, what a shock that was <laughs> to, and they actually they were pretty good uh you know college bands and choirs but mm -hmm. lawrence Simons were and they, they still are uh, right. still are very good so the your book the potluck club the play uh does that have something to do with your theater background it it sure does um the writing mentor that i first took a course writing course when i decided um, I think this is a gift set that I'm supposed to do something with because I love to story tell and I love to write, but I knew I needed to hone my craft. So I actually went and signed up to take a course that was then through the Jerry Jenkins Christian Writers Guild. And I met my mentor, which was a lady named Eva Marie Eberson from Florida. And as we got involved with my course, she says, by the way, um, I am going to be in Dallas at a Christian booksellers convention. Why don't you come and see me at my booth? And I did. And she was there with Linda Shepard. And the two of them had co-authored this six book uh, series called The Potluck Club. And it's a very lovely series. And the characters are warm and rich. And you just, you just get right into their lives. And... I said to her after I had read all six books, I said, um, I would like to maybe write one of those as a play. And she goes, well, she says, how about if we just try the first book? And I think they wanted to see, you know, would I follow through on it? And which I did. And it was a long process, just like anybody else that knows that if you've written a book, writing a play is, is, is still an arduous task. Uh, because once you get to where you think you have it, then you need to workshop it by pulling actors together and letting them read it and letting you hear your words out loud. And does it work? Doesn't it work? Anyway, months and months and months down the road, rewrites. I actually co-authored it with these two that authored the book. And we actually had a play that I was able to find a church that let us use their uh, stage and their space as a venue. And the two authors of the book came from Colorado and Florida to actually be there opening night. And we put it on for three weekends. And the people that I cast to be in it were, they still talk about it to this day. Can we do it again somewhere? Please, can we do it again? Because they just, they fell in love with the story and the characters and it, it, it mm -hmm. was just awesome. So yes, a different beast than writing a book, but it would never have come about had I not done some stuff on stage and thought, hmm, I like to write and I like to be on stage. So why don't I try to marry the two and take a book and try to turn it into a play? So you really have been a lifelong learner, trying yeah. different things and and doing them and doing them well. Guys, that's a lot of a lot of accomplishments there. I. I didn't know this about you until we <laughs> got to talking today. Way to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, in the time that we have left, and, and we'll do another interview that people will get to hear uh, a week later. Uh, when they watch it, uh, it'll be a week later. But 
we'll have the same shirt and blouse on and be look the same <laughs> because we're recording it on the same day. I think people have figured that out by now. But uh, uh, before we do that, uh, tell a little bit more about uh, the book, what, what you hope uh, uh, people will get from it and where they can get a copy of it. Okay. Um, it's called That Still Small Whisper. It'll actually look just like this. This is oh, the cover great. of it. Yeah. Um, it will be available. I was trying really hard for an Easter weekend release. Uh, looks like it's actually going to probably release on the marketplace um, April the 10th, but don't hold me to that date. But very soon, very soon it's going to be available. People can get it um, Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com. It'll be available there. They can also write to me and I can actually sign it to them and send it to them if they so wish. And I can be reached at 40, that's the number, 40, whispers, plural, at gmail.com. Great. Well, I have an order in for mine and I'm looking forward to getting it. Yeah. Yep. Just as soon as they hit my door, they, I've got my pre-orders that are going out. Yeah. Good. Well, it's a great experience to do that and then to, uh, uh, to see it finally come to fruition. And then, and then of course, to see people um, benefit from it. Uh, and that's why, obviously, why we, or at least with me and most of the authors that I know, that's why we do this, so, so that we can help other people. And, and I'm sure that it will. So, and we'll talk about that a little more in our next interview. So, Carla Wicks, thanks again for being with us today. Sure. Grace to all with Paul Gray. It's really been fun getting to know you better. Hey, anytime. <laughs> thanks. Well, we'll do it again in just a little bit, and people will get it, be able to see that next week. So thanks again, and thanks to everybody for joining us today for another edition of Grace to All with Paul Gray.